Table Mountain. Oh, pretty bad. Right, this was Nelson Mandela's cell. Oh, <laughs> 
<laughs> Today we're hiking Table Mountain. It's very busy during this Christmas holiday time. Well, yesterday we paid tickets to ride up the gondola that goes up to the top of Table Mountain up there. But the line was ridiculous, like several hours like longer, longer than any Disney. Yeah, ride. longer than a Disney World ride, which is just too long. So we're gonna hike up, which is honestly what Kendra wanted to do. So Kendra won. I want to do the hard one. I mean, we can either hike for an hour and a half to two hours or wait in a line for an hour and a half to two hours. Online it was saying two and a half to three hours. So we'll see. So it's over 700 meters rise in elevation. We're with the new year. Definitely have a goal to try to lose weight and feeling the extra 20 to 50 pounds on me that I wish I didn't have that I've gained over the last many years. You feel it when you're hiking up over 2,000 feet. It's like carrying an extra Janae on my shoulders all the way up, which is also compounded when Janae actually wants to ride on my shoulders. But it does feel really good to be out and moving. We're so lucky to have some overcast right now. I hope that stays. We really debated back and forth whether or not to do the hike or do the ride up. And we had chosen to just take the ride up because I was really worried about these little kids hiking up this, but they seem to be doing better than I am. There's a couple from the Netherlands that is hiking up with us. And conversation makes everything better. All right, we turned on some Taylor Swift yeah. to try to help support us on our way up the mountain. Is she a dog? Yep, she's a dog and I'm Spider-Man. Spider-Man. Spidey pup. <laughs> What's your name, Puppy Sprinkles? You okay? Yes. Once you start noticing the flowers on this hike, they're everywhere. There are so many unique kinds of flowers I haven't seen before, and they're so vibrant. There's purples and reds and yellows and pinks. So beautiful. Hello, little bird. Hello. This little bird is kind of fun to watch. You want it to land on your finger? It's not a super colorful bird, but it's just going to hang it. I thought it was going to come land on your finger. <laughs> All right. They found a rest spot. It's so cool. Up in the gorge. It's climbing, and we're up in this gorge. But it feels like we get. Nowhere closer to the top. It's kind of crazy. The perception of the hike is wild. The sun is coming out. Definitely changes things. Everyone's so impressed with Janae. She's definitely been the youngest person out here. By far, by yeah. a mile. Yeah. So is Laura. Well, Janae's been a trooper. Knew there had to be at least a little bit of riding on the shoulders. Finding this method much safer with the uphill climb. Safe? Yeah. Totally. We're coming to the top of the gorge where the two sides are coming together. Janae and I are way in the back. We took a little bit longer of a break. Hold on tight. Well, Isaac came back to help us finish it off. This gets us up to the top of the mountain. As you walk through the gorge, you hope to have that incredible view that you see in drone shots. But unfortunately, we're not quite there yet. We're through the gorge, but we still got a little bit of a ways to go. You really see the mountain part of this. It just feels flat up here. So because we had purchased the cable car up and weren't planning on hiking, we didn't bring a backpack. We didn't bring water. Luckily we were able to buy a bunch of stuff, but it's been really hard to not have anything to carry all of our trash and just to have more of everything, snacks, water. But it feels good to be on top. How pretty that is. crazy today how the ocean line really dissolves into the clouds of the sky. You can't see an end. What's that song in Moana? How does it go? 
See the line where the sky meets the sea? It calls me. But you can't see the line because it don't exist right now. So in the line, we made friends with the people behind us. And before we went on the hike, we said like, oh, who can go there first? And uh, they just came. We beat, so them. we beat them. Yeah, we've been here a little bit. So we were faster hiking up the mountain than if we would have stayed in the line. That's insane. Well, we definitely regret that we didn't come here to Table Mountain before the Christmas break. There would have been a lot less people, a lot less lines, a lot less waiting. So we're thinking we came up this little path. Oh, I think we came through this gorge right here, and then we walked across the top to the cable car. That's so cool. This reminds me of Austria and Germany. We're doing some bowling, and there's a little playground area for the girls. It's money! Oh! <laughs> yeah. Me and Jeanette are doing an epic race in this thing. So, we go up that, through that. I should just show you. For the epic race. <laughs> Who's gonna win? What's happening? Jenny! <laughs> Just barely! That was such a fun race. It's a tie! You guys look at this Christmas tree, it's pretty cool. Oh, that's all cool. So this is the VNA waterfront in Cape Town. So we're back to uh, needing to walk on the left side. Oops, we forgot. When we were in London, we had a favorite restaurant. It's actually a South African restaurant called Wait. Nando's. Luckily, Nando's leads right out to the park. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Did you see the fountain that you can play in? You can? Yeah. Nice. The craziest thing about this mill was it was under $20. Really? Yeah. Street performers. Wow. He just fit through a tennis racket. Yeah, the street performer is pretty amazing. So we're getting ready to go with these older three kids to Robin Island, which is where Nelson Mandela was held as prisoner before he ended up becoming president. So the kids have been learning about apartheid since we've been here, but it basically is just laws that are set up to segregate whites and blacks and to really hold back and penalize the black people in the country. The girls and I are hanging out at Victoria Wharf, which is a shopping center, while Jeremy takes the older kids out to Robben Island. We've got a lot of shopping to do. The kids have outgrown a lot of their clothes, so we are needing some new clothes, some new shoes, all sorts of things, but we got distracted a little bit in a bookstore. I can't help it. Everything's in English. Finally getting ready to go on the barge that will take us out to the island. It was very 
quiet here at the waterfront. There was lots of just open areas. It was really quiet. Now it is popping. There's a lot going on. So Mandela really pushed for reconciliation and forgiveness rather than retribution and anger. And he taught some of the younger people and him and some of the other leaders taught some of the younger ones who didn't know how to read to read. Mandela even made a close relationship with his guards. I expected it to be all about Mandela, but I was also surprised by how many other people we learned about so Yeah, far. there was a lot of leaders mm -hmm. that were here. And it's been so interesting. Before Nelson Mandela, there was Robert Sabukwe, and one of the rules during apartheid was that all of the black citizens had to carry around a book that identified them, and he organized a day as a form of peaceful protest for all of them to leave their books at home and to go and turn themselves in to the police officers saying, look, I don't have my book with me that I, by law, have to carry around. And he ended up in the prison here and yeah, he never got, the legislature has even made a rule specifically for him, a law that kept him in prison in isolation. So one of the things that they did at the quarry was the, the leaders of the different movements that were political prisoners were able to meet as they did mindless manual labor in the quarry. This allowed them to talk, to share ideas of different political positions and begin to plan what they would want to do if they were set free. But they planted the seeds there that led to the future South Africa. And then that rock pile was actually a monument that Nelson Mandela started when he came back after he was set free. And they dropped the rocks there as a memorial of what had happened there. waterfront there's a great view of Table Mountain and the fog is coming in right now and when the fog comes in apparently they call it like tablecloth which I think is just really clever. So Nelson Mandela started a garden here while he was in prison. So while Nelson Mandela was here in prison he was writing his book A Long Walk to Freedom and he would hide the manuscript out here in his garden. All right this was Nelson Mandela's cell for 18 years he was in here and he did a total of 27 years at different prisons all combined. So the prisoners were here for political reasons. They just disagreed with apartheid rules that created laws that segregated and unfair and disadvantaged the black citizens in South Africa. What's crazy is right now we're doing something that he wanted for like 18 years. Nelson Mandela. Outside the prison. So Nelson Mandela was in prison for those 27 years. When he came out, he became the president of South Africa and really was a leader that showed forgiveness and reconciliation. Our guide actually said that South Africa was on the brink of a civil war and Nelson Mandela was able to help bring the peace. Yeah, instead of a war they were able to have leadership that brought people together. I think it's really beautiful and fair that he ended up winning a Nobel Peace Prize for what he did for this country. The waves are coming at us now. Yeah, we're on the ferry heading back. Whoa. <laughs> we did some shopping and we're walking over to meet up with Jeremy and the kids and I think we're arriving just at time. I think this is them. Those are seals. It's a South African fur seal. All right, well, we're ready to get off this thing. It did get really bumpy and they were just like handing out barf bags and people were, a lot of people got sick. They're excited. Did you guys see them? Yeah. Feels like they're like the last people off the boat, but they're there. Good night. Get yourself.